found these wood tiles in an ice cream bucket in the garage, and we're gonna see what we can do on a furniture clip. Before we get to the fun with the tiles, we've got to clean this piece. Thank you so much to Dixie Bell Paint Company for sponsoring this video. I will be using all of their products in this video and everything can be found down below in the description. So first to clean, we're gonna use Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner. I went ahead and put some of the granule substance inside of this spray bottle and warm water so that it could dissolve. And I'm just gonna spray down my whole entire piece and wipe it back so we can get all of that grease, dirt, grime, and anything else off of the furniture surface. As you can see, we've got ourselves a pretty cool mid-century modern piece. Uh, we found it on Facebook Marketplace for $75 and we thought it was a pretty good price for a piece like this. We love the legs and it's a pretty good size dresser as well. There's no brand on it so I'm not sure of the information about it but it is in pretty good shape so I figured could use a little love and a little update. So this is why we want to clean our piece because it is dirty. And if it's dirty, that paint will get all clogged up and it won't adhere very well to the surface, which then will cause a bad finish and the paint could scrape off uh, very soon after you paint it. So I just want to avoid that at all costs and clean your piece. Plus, you don't really know where the pieces have been, uh, so it's just important to give it a nice wipe down with any degreasing cleaner. I also like to go ahead and take the drawers out. Um, as you can see inside, it's quite dusty and dirty, so we need to get all of that cleaned out as well. While I'm taking the drawers out, I'm also gonna just label them real quick so that I know exactly where they go in the dresser because some of the drawers are different sizes, so it matters where they belong, which is easy to confuse if you don't label them. So I like to do like right side, number three. This drawer is a little bit wonky, so we'll have to kind of fix it up um, and clamp it together a little bit later, but it shouldn't be too difficult, knock on wood. After I use the white lightning, I like to go back with some water just to rinse it all down. Uh, sometimes the white lightning can leave behind a little bit of a residue. So it's just important to make sure you're starting with that clean surface. All right, it's time to sand. So basically on every single piece, you're gonna wanna scuff sand any areas that you're gonna paint. And especially on pieces that have laminate tops or any laminate parts. This dresser is laminate and I can tell because of the glossiness and by looking back here on the dresser, uh, you can tell that there's just a little laminate veneer on top of some particle board here. If you're interested in more information, go down below into the description. There's a link to get signed up and you can get notified for when our course launches and you can get more information like this and all things furniture flipping. So I'm gonna use my Orbital Sander by Ryobi. It is battery powered and I'm gonna use 120 grit. This is really going to help me with scuffing up and roughening up the glossiness of this laminate top here. Laminate is just so smooth, the paint would literally just glide right off. Like there's nothing for it to adhere to. So it's important to get that tooth with your sandpaper. And I'm also gonna use this on the rest of the surface to scuff sand that as well. 
course, I'm gonna grab my RZ mask so that I can get protection in my lungs. And you can use my code FFT10 for 10% off of masks like this. Let's do it. Okay, everything is scuff sanded. And so I'm gonna grab a microfiber cloth so that we can wipe all of that dust back. So there are just a few spots that the uh, edge banding veneer here is peeling up or is just missing completely. Um, so it looks like honestly this part has been glued previously so it is sticking out a bit which I don't really like. So I'm going to just kind of peel back the parts that are, you know, not very, not very well done, let's just put it that way. Um, and then this will give us a plenty of space for the Dixie mud to stick to. And what we're gonna do is basically just take the Dixie mud and apply it, it's wood filler. So we're just going to, um, Dixie Bell actually has black, white, and brown Dixie mud. So it doesn't really matter which color you use, uh, but it, if you, you know, maybe have a black piece of furniture, you could use the black for that reason. But I'm just going to basically fill in that area and then we'll let it dry and sand it back. Okay, and there's also some more chips over there that we're also gonna fill up. So while that wood filler dries, which Dixie Mud dries very quickly, so that's awesome. While that dries, we're gonna do something with the tiles. So I got all of these tiles, about 800 of them at Goodwill for $8. And when I saw them, I was just like, you know what? I feel like at some point in time, I could come up with some idea with furniture flipping uh, to make a unique look on a dresser. I've been wanting to try some texture um, a lot lately, so I thought that this dresser would be perfect. I'm going to be using these tiles as a design on the fronts of the drawers. I'm still kind of toying with what design I'm going for, and don't worry, I'm not going to keep the color of the tile. Those are just going to be painted over with the rest of it. But the whole look, I want the same. So I thought about this type of design where I could do kind of like a cross hatch look, but I'm not really feeling that. And plus they don't really match up quite evenly right here. So my other idea was to start at the edge and basically do a three by three pattern. Now, you'll notice that this part is not going to be covered. So I'm gonna start at the edge on this one and I'm just gonna be lining them up like so the whole time. something like that across the whole drawer front. I did do a little bit of testing before um, I actually got the idea and came up with it. So I think that I am ready to just go ahead and start gluing down. That way I don't have to do it all, glue it down, you know, one by one. Alrighty, one drawer is done. It's just drying over here where I started is pretty much dry um, and it's drying over here still. So I'm gonna hop over to drawer number two. Second drawer done, and I'm only doing the top two, so we're gonna let those dry, and in the meantime, let's get back to the Dixie Mud.
gonna get ready to prime and paint. So for the drawers, I like to use this pre-taped painter's plastic so that I can just wrap the drawer and it's basically just one step as opposed to doing multiple steps when using like a combo of a paint and a plastic. Got everything all plasticed off. Tedious job, but well worth it because the end result will just be a lot more finished and you could just tell that you paid attention to detail when you do things like this. So now we're gonna grab the Dixie Bell Boss to prime. I just got a second ahead of myself before primer. We are going to um, cut off this very last row of the tiles because it's hanging over probably about a quarter inch to a third of an inch. So I am just going to cut that to make it flush with the side of the drawer. That way it can still go in and out um, appropriately. Well, that didn't work. The tile that I was cutting kind of just flung I have no idea where it even went. That's why you wear safety goggles when you're using the saw. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different way because this, that's just not gonna work. Um, I'm gonna try maybe like my sander. I have a jigsaw, but it's not here. I might use my dad's jigsaw if this doesn't work. Ah! Uh, it, it might not be dry enough either, I guess. <sighs> Boss officially. So Boss is a stain blocking primer that is water-based. There's a couple of reasons I chose to use Boss um, because some of the areas where I sanded down on the dresser that are wood uh, went through the finish. So I'm there's potential for some bleed through and some of those wood tannins might pop through the paint color and we don't want that. And then my second reason is because of all of the colored tiles. It would be a bummer if all of those colors popped to the front. Um, so we just are gonna stain block that in and then this will also help just a little bit with, with adhesion as well. I always strain my primer or paint uh, when I am putting it into my sprayer and this will just make sure that there are no chunks in there that could get clogged in my sprayer later on. So I've got my spray gun all loaded up and before I actually spray on the drawer fronts, I'm gonna test my flow here on this cardboard box just to make sure that I've got it on the right settings and that everything is gonna flow nicely and I get a great flow pattern. So I'm getting a little bit of skipping in my flow pattern, which means my paint is most likely too thick. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water to the boss so I don't dilute it too much so it doesn't do its job, but I dilute it just enough so that it will spray nicely. I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not shaking like crazy, just kind of going round and around. We're gonna try that. All right, I'm getting a much better spray pattern, so we're ready to spray the furniture now.
right, first coat of primer is done. My primer is dry here, so I'm gonna take a super fine Surf Prep Rad Pad and just go over the surface real quick, just to knock back any texture that was created by the sprayer. And then I'm gonna wipe back that dust with my microfiber cloth before spraying the paint on. For this dresser, I decided to go very bold. We are gonna be using Midnight Green in Dixie Belle's Silk Paint line, which you guys probably know this already. This line is all in one. So it's gonna have the primer and the top coat built in, but it's more of an adhesion primer, which is why I went ahead and did the stain blocking primer. So I'm gonna do two to three coats of this for full coverage and to get the most uh, use out of that top coat in there. Can you tell? All that marches near because we got green paint, green jacket, and green eyes. St. Patty's Day, here we come. She's prepped. She's not getting pinched this year. Drawers have their first coat. Now we'll do the base. Wow, it's looking very bold. I think that I actually really like the color. I know it's kind of out of my comfort zone, but once it dries, it does get a tad bit darker. So we're gonna let coat number one dry and we'll come back for coat number two. So it's time for coat number two, but just like between the primer and the paint, between coats of paint, I like to take my sanding pad and just smooth out anything that could have landed, which there are a few little debris um, pieces that landed in the wet paint. So this sandpaper is gonna get those off. I got that second coat on. I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off while the paint is still a bit wet so that we don't have any mishaps where it peels back the paint. Again, that job is tedious, but so worth it for all the crisp lines. So I'm just taking an artist brush and getting into the little areas where my sprayer couldn't quite reach without making a whole bunch of pooling up paint. It's always a great idea to have these artist brush on hands for these small details. Second coat dried on here, and then to be completely honest and transparent with you guys, I didn't get full coverage, but the weather 
was not great today. So in doing the third coat, I did it off camera, but I just took a 3 8 inch nap roller to get a smooth finish and I took everything inside uh, so that I had a nice warm area so it would self level nicely and I applied that third coat. So we've got full coverage now so we get to assemble. This was a pretty quick flip for this dresser. Um, just adding a little bit of texture. I cannot wait to see it all come together. All right, we've got a done piece. It looks so cool. This literally is my vision. This keeps happening. Doesn't happen every time, but this really came to life. And again, texture is just really in style. And I think it's continuing to be in style for 2023, plus the green. And then I just went ahead and left the legs alone because they're actually plastic legs. So I didn't even have to like restain them or anything. I just wiped them down and this piece is so beautiful. Let's talk about the numbers on this piece. So I got it originally for $75 and then the tiles cost me $8 for 800 of them, but I only used about 200, so $2 there. And then the paint for one of the cans of the silk paint is about 20 to $25 plus some primer. So we're all in around $110, which isn't too bad for a flip like this. The mid-century modern style is super in style so I'm assuming that this is gonna sell pretty quick and I'm also gonna be pricing this one to sell pretty quick now I'm not gonna be selling it super low at like $200 but I think feel like I could get around six to $700 on this, but Neiman and I are starting to chip away at our personal debt. And so we've decided that we would rather sell more pieces for, you know, maybe a little bit less than we think we could actually get um, and start paying off those personal debts. So I'm probably gonna list this around $400. And if you're interested in following along and just learning more about mine and Neiman's debt story and us paying it off over the next year or two, head over to our vlog channel where we go a lot more deep in there. Okay, I'm coming at you about 24 hours after listing this piece. However, this piece has actually been sold for 23 of those hours. I sold this piece within about an hour after listing. She reached out really just in 10 minutes after I listed it and she was the buyer. So we are gearing up for delivery. So we also charged $50 for delivery. So a total of $450 and the all in cost was, I believe I said, $110. So we're we're getting a total profit of, that's quick math, $340, says Neiman. So there we go. That is going toward our personal debt payoff. Thank you so much to Dixie Bell for sponsoring this video. Again, all of the links are down in the description below for all of these awesome products. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. This is probably one of my favorite pieces, so you definitely don't wanna miss it. Get subscribed down below and give us that like. See you on the flip side.